Okay, so let's start. Uh, Danny Englander is going to be presenting Getting Started with Layout Builder for Drupal 8 and 9 for us today at Drupal Camp Asheville. Danny is a senior front end Drupal developer um, over at Bixel, and he's been with them for a couple of months now. And before he begins, I want to do a little bit of short housekeeping. Um, again, if you want transcriptions, there's a link at the top of the chat where you can click on the link and see transcriptions. Also, um, be aware that anything that happens in the Drupal app Asheville space is um, please abide by our code of conduct. You can go to the website for more information or into the reception hall and hop in and you can see that Avi and Alana are our code of conduct uh, people for, for the event. And it applies to chat. It applies to um, uh, Slack, all of the spaces where we interact with each other. And without further ado, Danny, why don't you take it away with getting started with Layout Builder for Drupal 8 and 9. Uh, thanks a lot, Amy June. Uh, welcome, everybody. I really appreciate uh, folks coming out today um, for uh, getting started with Layout Builder for Drupal 8 and 9. We're here at Drupal Camp Asheville. July 9th, 2021. And before I get started, I'd just like to uh, mention a few causes that I feel very passionate about. Um, I've supported both of these um, over the past year, either directly and indirectly as well. Um, Stop AAPI Hate, uh, and AAPI stands for Asian American Pacific Islander. And as some folks might know, there's been a lot of violence um recently in recent times um against against that that group of, of folks and also black lives matter um very supportive of that as well um so i just wanted to mention these two uh okay and one housekeeping thing bixel is hiring uh we've got a slew of Positions open, Drupal developers, marketing, all kinds of, uh, we've got some UX positions. So feel free to head on down to uh, pixel.com slash careers. And um, who am I? Uh, I'm Danny Englander, a senior front end Drupal developer at Bixel. On social media, I'm Danny underscore Englander, uh, Twitter and Instagram, pretty much. Um, and I have a Drupal blog that I've been writing on for about 11 years. Uh, so um, dannyenglander.com. And I'm very passionate about learning. And I'm actually celebrating my 25th year now as uh, a web developer for my career. Uh, so it's a year of celebration, 25 years. Um, so what are we going to cover in this? Uh, what is Layout Builder? Uh, what versions of Drupal does it work with? Who is it for? Anatomy of a Layout Builder page. Is Layout Builder extendable? Building with Layout Builder. Theming with Layout Builder. And I'll do a live demo at the end. And and um, you know I'll. I'll I actually have the question. I actually have the chat in a separate window, so I'll be able to see if there's any questions. Um, okay, so what versions of Drupal does Layout Builder work with? Well, it started in Drupal Core 8.6 as an experimental module, and then by Drupal 8.8 .8 and above, it it became stable, so it no longer had the experimental uh, moniker on it. And then uh, with Drupal 9, it's also stable. Um, and today, the demo that I'll show you is Drupal 9. Uh, it's working on a Drupal 9 site. OK, so before I get started, um, in case there's some new folks to Drupal, um, I'd like to uh, define, make, you know, define some terms that, might, that I might be mentioning along the way. Uh, so uh, uh, the first one would be a content type. So a content type in Drupal is, a, is also referred to as a node type. Um, it could be like something like a blog, a landing page, a person content type. 
Uh, taxonomy in Drupal is also known as like a vocabulary. So that would might include tags, categories, places, things like that. Um, if you're familiar with WordPress, WordPress uses, uh, you know, a common convention in WordPress is tags and categories. So that would be like a taxonomy. Um, a block in Drupal is a piece of content that can be placed within a region of a page. So it's usually independent of what I'll call an entity, although a block is an entity too. Um, and I'll define entity in a minute. Uh, media. So a media is also an entity. Um, so media can include images, files, videos, audio. Um, and of course, we have entity. It's entity in Drupal is a type of data. So you might have a content type, taxonomy, as I mentioned, vo you know, vocabulary, users or entities, media, menus. You even have custom entities in Drupal, either you know, handwritten with code, or you have ECK entity construction kit, which is a fine module. I love that module, and. Um, and there you can create your own custom entities. And, and ECK is, comes in handy for a lot of things. Um, Drupal config. So Drupal config, starting in Drupal 8, uh, are Drupal settings exported into code, uh, which is excellent. It's a, it's a, and the, the code is YAML, uh, YAML data files. Uh, you know, in Drupal 7, we were used to Drupal features. Uh, but now in Drupal 8 and 9, we have config, and that has certainly start, uh, solved a lot of issues uh, around site configuration. Um, and Git, uh, Git is a method to store in version code. That comes in handy as well. Uh, and the biggie here is structured modular content. So structured modular content, if you've ever used like the paragraphs module, um, you know, where you can rearrange different components, uh, basically, it's like styled components for your content editors. And a view mode. Uh, view mode is the display of an entity. Okay, so what is Layout Builder? Layout Builder is an updated paradigm for, for a component-based structured modular content plus layout. Um, it allows content editors and site builders to easily and quickly create visual layouts for displaying content. Um, and you can see here I have like, you know, different types of layouts. We have a one column, two column, three column, and then what's also known here, the fourth one is, you know, they usually call this bricks. Um, okay, so use cases. What are the layout builder use cases? Well, one might be that content, edit content editors choose from a selection of predefined layouts via Layout Builder Library. Uh, content editors choose from a pre predefined layouts where you can also override, override those on a per entity item basis using the Layout Builder UI. Um, and then maybe a third use case would be fields on an entity uh, which might be a good use case for retrofitting Layout Builder on an existing site that has a lot of fields set up for an entity type. So that might come in handy as well. Um, there's also things like I know um, um, I know that uh, I know that um, RISD, uh, a Drupal agency, did a site for RISD for their uh, student art sites where each student could have an individual um, site uh, that they set up in their own layout builder page. So they were allowed to kind of go to town with that and do whatever they liked. Um, very interesting use case there. Um, so here's an anatomy of a layout builder page. Um, okay, so at face value, right from the get-go, when you click on manage display on your entity type, in this case, let's say a content type, um, basically this overrides what traditionally you're used to where all the fields show up. So when you, when you check the box to use Layout Builder, then you get all this and you can manage the layout. 
And then when you click that manage layout button, then you can choose from all kinds of things. So you have your action buttons and content preview. Can everyone still hear me? Oh, I guess we had some background noise. Okay. So yeah. Okay, great. Okay. That's much better. Thank you. Um, so we have our action buttons at the top here. So you can click preview, um, you know, so you can decide to show or hide a preview. You have your column selection for sections. Um, you can also add blocks here. Um, and this supersedes the standard display UI for an entity type. Uh, and this gives you a feeling of what the layout builder UI looks like. Um, choosing a block interface. So um, here's where you click add block in the layout builder UI. And you might get a selection of blocks here, or you can create a custom block. Um, so, so maybe you have some predefined blocks that people can use. Um, so it's very, very flexible. Um, this is an example of a layout builder configuration for a block. So in this case, I have uh, a block called R statistics. And within this, I have ECK entities uh, that can be rearranged um, almost like paragraphs. And you can choose a background color with uh, visual color choices. And then down at the bottom, you have styles, predefined styles that you can choose from. So it's it's very user-friendly. Um, it's it's almost like a, a common paradigm that we're used to with paragraphs, if, if anybody has used the Drupal paragraphs module. So it's very, very similar to that. So who is Layout Builder for? Well, it could be for site builders, uh, content editors, marketing folks, and developers. So it, it, it definitely applies to all these, these groupings of, of people. Um, is Layout Builder extendable? Yes, it is. Um, we have an ever-growing ecosystem of contrib modules. Um, define custom layouts in a module or your theme to extend it. And of course, Layout Builder Library is is really nice module where you can offer alternate layouts to your content editors just by choosing a select list. So let's say you don't even want your content editors to go into the layout, the actual Layout Builder UI you could give them this select list that would allow them to choose from some predefined layouts. And I'll show you an example of something like that. Um, so there's a big ecosystem. These are kind of my uh, go-to contrib modules that I'd like to add on to Layout Builder. Uh, Layout Builder styles, um, and that's where I showed you those predefined classes. Um, Layout Builder restrictions is a great module where you can you can greatly simplify what content editors can choose from. Uh, so this module really comes in handy because otherwise, uh, sometimes sometimes it's a little overwhelming if you just allow everything to show up for content editors. So restrictions module comes in very handy. Um, and you can greatly simplify the UI using that. Um, Layout Builder modal, that is, I love using this module because it it greatly expands the content area when you're when you're configuring a block uh, and doing block settings within Layout Builder UI. Because if you don't use the modal, then everything is in kind of a narrow sidebar. So that really helps as well. Um, Layout Builder component attributes. That's a great module for um, for developers. Maybe they want to add you know, a one-off class or an ID, a custom ID or some data attributes so that I would say this is a good module for developers, you know, to, to add some cl custom classes, you know, while styling and theming. Uh, and uh, the layout builder library, which I've mentioned for predefined layouts using a select list. Um, layout builder operation link, it's a tiny little module but what it does is if you're allowing overrides, and I'll talk about overrides, if you're, if you're allowing overrides on a per entity item basis, then this adds a little um, uh, display link 
right on the main content page. Uh, so that definitely comes in handy. And worth a look, uh, Layout Builder Advanced Permissions. Um, and there's also one I don't have on here. It's called Layout Builder Lock. And I've not really gotten into those two modules yet, but they sh definitely show some potential in terms of governance if you want to um, have you know, very specific governance over what people can and can't do, you know, your content editors within the Layout Builder UI. Okay, so building with Layout Builder. Key points. So it replaces the entity display with Layout Builder UI. So when you go to manage display for an entity, let's say a content type, um, you would check that button, you know, uh, use Layout Builder, and then that would replace, that would override drag and drop functionality within the Layout Builder UI, which is fantastic. Um, option to preview in Layout Builder UI. So there's a little toggle button to, you know, show your real time preview, which is nice. Um, custom layout templates, which are overridable. Um, layout variants with Layout Library, as I mentioned. Um, and custom view modes on a per entity basis. So what you can do is, and this is really cool, you can you can use entity view, which comes from the C tools module, Chaos Tools. So you can enable, you can, and you know, you can download or however you do it with Composer, you can enable the C tools module, and then you get something called entity view, and you can create a new view mode for a certain part of the page and then call that in an entity view and this solves this solves a big problem because um one 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 request i see quite often maybe in drupal slack is you know oh i want to add a wrapper around a certain number of fields and there's an open issue for that in core um, on drupal.org. But until then, we have entity view, which is fantastic. And what it does is it, it, creates, it creates a wrapper around designated fields set up in a different view mode than your default display. And then you get a nice entity template for all those. And you can go to town theming that. So it's really nice. Um, and much of this isn't captured is captured by Drupal 8 and 9 config export and import. Um, one thing I would caution, you have to be careful with blocks because blocks are a little finicky in terms of, um, you know, uh, the way it's captured in config, you might not get, you know, cause part of blocks are content and part are config and there's various different methods to work around that. Um, so yeah, you just want to be aware of that. Um, and here's a few ideas for building. So layout builder controlled at the entity type level or layout builder controlled on a per entity item level, which means as a site admin or as a site builder, I'll say, I want to allow my content editors to override on an individual node basis uh, for layout builder. Um, for that, let's say you have a con specific content type, and I'll show you that as well. Um, or you can offer multiple layouts to choose from per entity using layout library or a combination of some of the above. Uh, theming with layout builder. Okay, so layout builder styles allows for predefined custom HTML classes per section or block. Um, Twig custom template suggestions, of course. Um, and I see a few questions in chat. I'll get to those in a minute. And view modes can be set per entity and leverage via template suggestions. Um, and that's where entity view comes in handy. Um, and I'm just seeing that in the chat, it says field group also does some of the wrapping. Uh, but as far as I know, I don't think you can use field group in Layout Builder. Um, there's a bunch of issues open about all that. So that's why Entity View from C Tools comes in really handy because that, that achieves the same thing and it's actually even better. Um, so yeah, uh, let's see, panels and page manager. Yeah, so um, somebody asked about panels. 
Um, you know, I haven't used panels in many years. I haven't used it since the Drupal 7 days. Um, so I, I can't comment on, you know, th this is, I think this is a more accessible solution than panels uh, because you do get that visual, um, you get the visual clue-ins. Uh, so I, I think layout, you know, let's say it's kind of like the next panels for Drupal 8 and 9, um, if you will. Uh, but I, I haven't used panels in Drupal 8, um, so I haven't used it in many years since Drupal 7. Um, and of course, Entity View, as I mentioned, that comes in super handy. Okay, so here's an example of um, uh, some twig template output. So you can see here, you get a ton of, uh, you get a ton of Drupal um, twig template suggestions, um, you know, at the, usually in layout builder at the top level is a block. And then, um, whoops, I'll go back here. And then you might get your entity within that, like let's say node or taxonomy term. Um, so it's, it's really great to theme, especially like I use, I like using block element modifier, also known as BEM or BEM. And uh, it really lends itself to that. So it comes in, you know, it's just great uh, in terms of getting nice template suggestions. Uh, also, if you use the Layout Builder Styles module, that will give you extra template suggestions based on the style that is selected. So that's really cool. Um, and this is Layout Builder Component Attributes. So this is the module that I was mentioning that comes in handy for developers. So you can see here, like I've put in a class of hero. So that might be your top level, um, that might be your top level uh, block class, if you will, you know, for using block element modifier. Uh, and that that is really nice. And then that's captured by config as well. Um, and here are our layout builder styles with this red arrow. And here's entity view. So you can see here that, and I'll show you an example of this in my live demo. Um, you can see here, like I have a bunch of fields um, in a two column layout for layout builder, but within that I have an entity view that's a profile card where I have a wrapper um, because otherwise you can't really create wrappers. Again, there's an there's an open core issue for that. But until then, um, until that's resolved, uh, entity view comes in super handy. I mean, you could also use a contextual, a traditional view, like a views view, um, and you'd have to add a contextual argument to that. Uh, but this is really nice because then you don't have to go creating a view. You just create a view mode, which is super quick. And then you can set your fields on that alternate view mode. Um, in my case here, profile card. And then, then this profile card gets themed as its own entity, uh, self-contained with a wrapper and everything. So it's really neat. Um, and Radix layouts for Layout Builder, I have not, I have, I have not tried this, but it looks interesting. It just gives you a ton of possible layouts. Um, I don't know, I almost feel like it's too many here, but uh, you know, it it might serve a purpose. So, you know, give that a try sometime. Um, the last I saw it wasn't it wasn't compatible with Drupal 9, but I I think that's probably been resolved by now. Um, and what about paragraphs? Yeah, so well, okay, so I I probably should put an asterisk by this because the original, you know, the 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 contrib module paragraphs. It, it's not really a visual layout tool. It's a content layout tool where you, you know, you drag and drop those paragraphs around, but you don't really get a visual preview. However, there's a new kit on the block called Layout Paragraphs. And with Layout Paragraphs 2.0 Alpha 2, which is cutting edge, so you, <laughs> you want to be careful using it, um, that has that has front end editing visually now. Um, so, so yeah, layout paragraphs. And the, the cool thing about layout paragraphs um, is you can retrofit it to an existing site that has paragraphs. Um, I see a question here. Does layout builder have 
any impact on performance? Um, no, I don't think it does because in the end, it's just standard Drupal templates that you would, you know, that you would uh, use just like any other thing. So when it renders, you know, it's just your standard Drupal templates. And in fact, um, at my last company, we built uh, we built a huge um, layout builder site, and we got a performance score in Lighthouse of ninety nine. And ninety five percent of that site was built was built with uh, layout builder. So we got stellar performance scores um, on that. So yeah. Uh, but I'll, I digress paragraphs is, yeah, I could go on f about that. Um, layout paragraphs is great. So let's do a live demo here. Okay. So, um, how are we doing on time? Yeah, we're doing pretty good. Um, well, yeah, of course, caching. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you're going to want as much caching, uh, as possible, but that would apply to anything really. Um, yeah, so that's, that's important. Ca any, you know, the more caching you can have, the better, uh, is a good rule of thumb for Drupal. Um, okay. So at the very heart of layout builder, you have two modules here. You have layout discovery and layout builder. Both of these are core. And so you'll definitely need to enable both of these. Um, and then you can see here, I have my, I have my, you know, contrib modules that I like using. Um, I have, you know, layout builder, component attributes, modal, operation link, restrictions, uh, styles. I've got layout build, layout library, and uh, gin layout builder. So that's, that's an add-on because I'm using this contrib theme called Jin, which is a which is a sub theme of the new core admin theme called claro which is still in experimental mode so i'm kind of on cutting edge here um okay so let's let's proceed so so here's my here's a landing page uh with layout builder and you can see here i have a hero and um i have you know these statistics and I have uh, our team, and you can see here. Like I'll show you this in the in the layout builder UI. You can choose visually what color you want the backgrounds to be for these. So I've chosen navy blue for this and red for these people. Um, I have an accordion here with an FAQ. So as you can see, I have many different components. Um, I have I have a video component here with a caption. Um, I've got a call to action uh, here component. I've got a I've got a quote component, um, and I have uh, you know like an image, image and text component with and the image has you know a caption and attribution um, with a with a call to action button. Um, so I have all those. And then in layout, this is the same content type uh, for landing page. I have an alternate layout set up in layout builder library where somebody can choose this alternate layout. So I have a different hero image. I have a different type of stats. Um, I have, you know, this, this person, these, this person component area. Um, I have like a full width image. Um, I have a video and a, a different quote and a different type of call to action. Um, so that's all done with that. And here's my manage display page. So this is your, this is where you usually see all the field listings, but once you ch choose, uh, use layout like use layout builder then that overtakes this and you the fields disappear and then they they move on over into when you click manage layout um and so you can see here allow each content item to have its layout customized so you can think of that as basically overrides on a per entity item basis um so on a node edit page you'll once you enable this you'll see a um 
you will see a layout tab where you can then override that layout just on that node. Um, and, and this is down here, this area is uh, layout restrictions, layout builder restrictions. So I should probably make this a little bigger. Yeah, maybe that helps. Um, so here you can say what you will and won't allow to be used in layout builder um, in the UI. So this really helps to simplify. Um, somebody's asking what happens to your content when, when layout builder is disabled? Yeah, so it goes back to, it reverts back to the default, your traditional manage fields, if you will. Um, so let's say I can go, let me go to this teaser here. That might help you visualize this. Um, so here, here's your traditional, you know, here's your traditional fields UI. So when you disable layout builder, it would just revert back to what we've all known, you know, what we're all used to before layout builder, where, you know, you can, you can rearrange these fields and you have, you know, these settings here and, um, so yeah, it just reverts back to that. Um, so then once I click on manage layout, we would go over to here and I'll turn off the preview. So here's our layout and you can see we have all these different, you know, we have all these different blocks um, and uh, we have our, you know, another two column region where you can, if, if I click on this, you can see I can change, you know, the percentage of the columns, which is really neat. Um, and then all these you can configure. So I can go over here and configure this and this would edit. Um, and you can see here, I have this reusable button. So what you can do is this is a patch um, that I applied um, and you can make, uh, you can make a block you're using reusable, which is interesting, but you have to be aware that once you make it reusable, if somebody changes it somewhere else, it would change it on your page as well. So you might want to apply some governance around that of who can do that. And once it's in there, they can't edit it. So that might be where the advanced permissions module comes in or the lock module. Um, I haven't really gone that far in doing that. So, but I just thought this was interesting to give it a try, this reusable option. Um, so here's my call to action button on the hero and I have some text um, and we can say to display the title or not. Um, so that really comes in handy. And then if you click add section, you can choose your, your, um, your, your column sections. Uh, so that's really nice. And here I have a one column up at top and a two column at the bottom. Um, and then I can, I can click the preview and again, so this is right in the layout builder UI. So we see a full front end preview um, on this. So that's kind of neat uh, because we're, you know, it, we're changing the paradigm here because you're actually seeing a preview of things. Um, so I can, I can undo that. And if I wanted to drag these around, I can drag them around. So I can do this, I can drag that there. So that comes in handy, um, full drag and drop functionality. Um, now, if I go over here, oh yeah. So I'm gonna show you that entity view. So I'm on, um, I'm on a person node. So this is a person content type. So we have, you know, basically our, all our fields here. We have a person image, then we have, you know, first name, last name, email, pronoun, title. Uh, and we have a biography um, and then settings. So here, this is really neat. This comes from layout library. So this gives us an alternative layout. So if I view this, um, right now I have person, person left and the, the content on the right. But if I edit it and I do, you know, I just get rid of that override or that that library item select if i save now now the person is on the right and i haven't really fully themed this i've just done a little bit 
I've just touched this a little bit, but it gives you an idea. Um, so if I go over to layout library, you'll see how I did that. So I have a this this one this layout that you saw in the um, in the select list on that node. So I can edit this layout, and so I have this library item where indeed the pro profile image is on the left, and um, the entity view that wrapper uh, is on the right. Um, and so if I go back there and I edit this. Um, I can go to the settings and I can choose that alternate layout, which comes from layout builder library. Um, and then I can save it and voila. So this whole thing in here, I'll just inspect this for a minute and, um, I will blow up this code. So if you're interested to know, so this is an entity, this is that entity view right here. And so this is this is themed. So you can see here it says block, block C tools, block entity view nodes. So that's that entity view from C tools. And it gives us a template based on based on the view mode we're using for entity view. So that really comes in handy. So we can theme this um, self-contained with a wrapper. Uh, and then I'm pretty sure, you know, layout builder will we'll get wrappers uh, natively in core eventually. So you wouldn't have to use entity view. Um, yeah, so that that's really nice. Um, and one thing I wanna show you here, so this is layout builder styles. Um, this is layout builder styles. So you can have predefined styles either on the component level or the section level, component being block, and section, of course, is section. Um, and you can see I've just, you know, made a few different possibilities here. And if I go, um, if I go here, so I can go um, configure. So you can see here, here, here are those styles. Or if I go to the um, the person one, you can see here I have some styles, and I also have these background color options. Uh, that are coming from color the color field module. Um, so that's layout builder styles. Here's layout builder component attributes. So this comes in handy. You can decide what you're going to allow. And let me just go back there for a minute. So if um, so if I want to, I'll go to this hero and I'll do manage attributes. So you can see here, you can put in all those attributes. This is something probably a developer would use. It'd be, you know, for one-off classes for theming and styling. Um, so you can decide what attributes um, that a developer could use. Um, and you probably wouldn't want your content editors using this. That's what layout builder styles would be for. And um, I'm just going to finish this up. And this is layout builder modal, which I showed you and this allows you to do the settings of that. Um, and I think that's that's a pretty good overview of Layout Builder. Um, does anyone have any other questions? We've got about five minutes left. Oh, okay. So somebody says, if a site is already built with Twig templates, how does this affect transitioning to Layout Builder? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, yeah, so, so it depends, you know, it depends. If, if you're retrofitting layout builder onto an existing entity type, like a node type, um, then you might need to do some adjustment. But if you're using view modes, um, you know, it may be that you can use some existing theming. It, it just depends. Uh, I don't know if there's a set answer for that. It's just going to be something you might have to experiment with. 
Um, but yeah, it could have affect them either positively or negatively. That's something you'd have to find out. Um, twig debug output, twig template debugging output would greatly help you with all that for sure. Did you see um, Andrew's question about content type uh, manage fields and what they look like? Uh, let's see here. Um, I don't see that. OK, um, right below. Uh, Olivia's Olivia's question, um, Andrew Butler, what do your content type managed fields look like? Oh yeah, okay. So, so if we go, um, if we go back over here, so um, let's see, uh, I think something like this. So here's your typical managed fields on a content type. This is how it looks, and you can, you know, you can, you can rearrange all this so that's the traditional way of of doing it and then you would theme this maybe with you know no templates or something like that but if i go over to default i've enabled layout builder here but normally if layout builder wasn't enabled it would it would look just like this so managing the fields ends up happening when layout builder is enabled it ends up happening in manage layout so this is where you would quote unquote manage your fields. And probably a better example of that is with this person where I'm actually using fields directly from the entity type. So I'm so this person content type, I'm using the fields right from that. Whereas in something like in something like this, I'm using custom blocks. So it's a whole different type of setup. So there's there's a lot of different ways you can do this. Oh, um, oh, <laughs> somebody's saying thank you for the gratis theme. Wow. Oh, that's a blast from the past. Wow. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's whew, that's a long time ago. Um, <laughs> and somebody says, I just followed a session about Drupal Gutenberg and now Layout Builder. Both look great. Any advice? Yeah, um, I, I was in I was in the Gutenberg session as well, and it was it was really interesting. Um, it Gutenberg looks to me I haven't used it, but it looks to me like a completely different setup and paradigm because you have that JSON setup, and there's like some React going on with the blocks. It, it's a very different thing. I, I think something like layout builder would be much more approachable to traditional drupal site builder builders and developers um that being said gutenberg looks really super interesting um yeah so um and of course now we have layout paragraphs and i'm 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 putting together a new presentation for that that i hope to give sometime this fall um and there's a question, can content editors still edit content from the note itself? Yes. So, so if I go over to content um, and I click on, so, so I, I have this node type that's being rendered with layout builder, but I can still edit that those fields because in this case, all the fields here are being rendered in layout builder. So I can still edit all these just like you do normally with a with a traditional um, content type. So there's no you know there's no changing any of that. Um, now for landing pages that would be a little different because you'll probably be using custom blocks, and so therefore you like if I go over to my landing page edit page, you'll see it's very sparse. So if I click on this, you see you don't have any fields here because it's all it's a landing page. So it's it's all custom blocks, and then you know you have your layout builder settings here, but there's no fields here. So that would be the difference there. Um, and WordPress, yeah, Gutenberg with Word. I think Gutenberg seems to be pretty standard now with WordPress. Um, I think that's you know 
I, I don't know if it's enabled by default with WordPress out of the box, but I think it's being used a lot. Oh yeah, so the layout library, how did I create that? Um, so, th so that's with a contrib module called layout library. So you enable that and then you can create those alternate layouts for any entity you like. Um, and then it's just like using the layout builder UI. Um, yeah, so the layout library contrib module, I think it's called layout builder library officially or something like that. Um, and that's, that's down here with layout library. So this is a contrib module. And if you can see, um, yeah. Okay, great. And I think we're at time, but thank you everybody. I really appreciate everyone attending.